Jay Haynes for the Film Sensei YouTube channel. Last week, I gave away a project file, Graphic to Dust, that was using the Particle Simulator. This week, I'm giving away another project file similar to that one, but now we are using the Shatter Effect. Because I'm using the shatter effect, this creates a completely different look and feel, but it's very similar to the one that we did before. So I just want to take you through the project file. The link is in the description below. Also, I'm going to go ahead and put a link to last week's video right up here in the upper right hand corner. Okay, so if you go and look first at the graphic, you can see that there's just a text file. And like last week, I added some other graphics that you can just drag and drop in there and play with those all you want. If you change the graphic in this tab, it will automatically and procedurally update it here in the final graphic to dust uh, project tab here. If you go to the timing map, you will see uh, that you have different timing options. So for example, you have explode all at once and this is just a black plane which means that if i play this it will all explode boom at the same time if you want it to explode say all at the same time but you want it to explode um a second or so in then all you have to do is just change the fill color effect to something here that's a little more gray and then when you go to the graphic to dust, it'll wait and it'll wait and it'll wait until it gets to where, however gray it is before it blows. So the idea is, is that if it's black, it will go faster. And if it's white, then it will take longer to um, do its thing, right? So if you look at some of these other ones, for example, a gradient from left to right, you can see it's black on the left and white on the right. And so the shatter map or the shatter effect uses that timing and it starts over here on the left and moves its way over to the right. If I uh, use the left to right, it's just the invert of the other one. Uh, here's radial from the center. It starts black and then goes out. Uh, here is a base organic. This is just uh, literally the default fractal noise. Um, and if you go ahead and you run that, then you'll see... Uh, that the default fractal noise, uh, you know, has a little bit of black here, a little bit of white there, that kind of stuff. Okay, so it just sort of, uh, over the time of it, um, shatters it in whatever way that, uh, you know, the fractal noise dictates for it. Okay, if you actually look at the shattering effect itself, you'll find the shatter effect here. Uh, if you look at the timing map, which is under physics, then you'll see that it is starts at zero seconds and ends at three seconds, which means by the time you get to here, uh, it is completely through the timing map. Uh, you can adjust that if you want it to go faster or slower. Um, we are using a pattern map, and that is done through the pattern drop down menu. And right now it's a custom map and the custom map is the pattern map. If you come over to the pattern map, you'll see I have a few different patterns available for you. So the one you just saw was this pattern. This is just a fractal noise. Here's a pattern um, with a different fractal noise with bigger chunks. And here's one with um, very small pieces that will be flying off. And here is a more organic looking one. And each one of those will end up making it look a little bit different. Let me do this just so you can see it. Let me just say explode all at once. And let me drop that back down to be completely black. That way it explodes quickly. And this takes a lot of computer resources. So therefore, you know, um, I, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm using a render preview here. Uh, this little button right there, right? Um, but you can see that each one of these pattern maps creates a different look in the explosion. So in this particular case, pow, like that, okay? Um, so you can play with those pattern maps. The other thing that you can do is you can just go ahead and change that from custom to, say, bricks. And now it will do bricks, okay, uh, this way, right? 
Um, and you can, of course, change the size and the extrusion. They go all the way down to five, and the extrusion goes all the way down to zero. Uh, but I have a custom set at five and five. But you can make that size bigger if you want bigger blocks, uh, that sort of a thing. Okay. Um, also, you can use hexadecimal or hexadecimal, hex hexagonal uh, blocks instead of uh, square or brick blocks. Uh, and those create more like a particle look to it. Um, and coupling that with a timing map and everything like that, you'll have a pretty nifty little uh, project file to play with that you can use to, to do titles and things like that, um, whether they explode all at once or whether they have a gradient across or whatever. Play with those things. Go ahead. Um, I would encourage you to turn on the motion blur uh, because turning on the motion blur here under motion blur itself will give it a much better look than if you um, leave it off. What I've shown you in uh, uh, just in this preview window is with the motion blur off because it takes a long time. Obviously, you can tell how much slower this is moving. Uh, but I'll give you a couple of examples of what it looks like with the motion blur on uh, as I go ahead and close the video. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Like and subscribe if you like this kind of content. And hey, thanks for watching.